Hey ladies, we made it an entire Lily Mom's year with this quasi virtual setup. And it's a little bit bittersweet to be recording this very last introduction video, but here we are. Today's talk was written by Dr. A.D. Miles. I have loved the last four or five years getting to really know A.D. and just watch and learn from her wisdom as she parents her two boys. One is already in college and one is about, or I guess is graduating right now. Um, he's a senior. And so today she is just imparting some wisdom on how to teach your kids to serve and what that looks like and how we can do it well. I feel like some of us are naturally gifted in being servant hearted and servant serving others. Looking at you, Heather Shedd, and some of us looking at myself have to work at it. And what better way than to start teaching our kids when they're young? Um, she just talks about how that starts with serving your, serving each other and serving your family and then can go out from there. Um, and so I really hope that you take from this and apply it to your family. All of our families are different. Our kids are different. They're different ages and stages and different, we have different numbers of kids in our home. And so while this won't look exactly the same for everyone, it is still a great topic just to begin thinking about and seeing what you can implement. We want you to take what works for you and um, not feel bogged down by pressure to do, do what everyone else is doing. Um, so unfortunately, AD was not able to record her talk for us, but she was gracious enough to give it and let us record it for her. So... I thankfully have a wonderful friend who is willing to step in and save the day. Um, so today's talk was written by A.D. Miles, but is given by Dina Keithley. And Dina is a mom of four. Her oldest will be finishing elementary school and they trickle on down from there. But her youngest is going to be starting kindergarten in the fall. And so Dina can impart some of her own wisdom infused with A.D.'s talk. Um, and so I hope that this talk... Um, it's just really encouraging for you and sparks some really good discussion in your group. Hi, Lily Moms. I'm Heather Shedd, and I'm going to do our devotion today. Um, Erica always wants us to do something that God is showing us. So I have just been trying to thank God, um, always showing me lots of things. Just we have a lot of people in our house and lots of um, sin and struggles and just um, things that we deal with all day long. So what is my main focus is on God because I do not know all the answers and leaning on my own understanding is never the right way. But I do have um, a word of encouragement for us today as we are finishing out this year building moms and we'll soon not have this uh, bi-weekly meeting of encouraging one another um, I want to know that you will not be alone, that God will be with you, and he has a promise for us in Deuteronomy 31.8, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will never fail you or abandon you. And I love that encouragement that he will go before us, and for us not to be discouraged that there are lots of things of this world that we can focus on and be discouraged by or just how our children are behaving or acting or turning out or just our own hearts, how they are um, not as we want and full of anger or um, sadness. Or, But to know that God is with us. He is with us in the storm. He is with us no matter what heartache and pain and suffering comes. Um, he does not want us to be afraid he wants us to focus on him. And we have another one that kind of goes with this. Another verse says, so set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3, 2. So that is such a comfort knowing that um, we are to focus on him and not on the, the things of this world that will constantly pull us away from him. Um, so keep your eyes and hearts and minds focused on the Lord. Um, as we have this beautiful summer coming up that we can enjoy our family time and spending more time outside as the weather is getting beautiful and um, loving our babies and our husbands. Um, and I pray that you would um, just be with these moms, that you would comfort them and be their strength as they are soon um, on their own for the summer, that you are with them always. Amen. Love you all. 
Hello, North Wake Lily Moms. My name is Dina Keithley. I'm really excited to be here with you guys. Thank you for letting me come and give you this talk on growing hearts of service in our kids. I will say that it's a little bit different uh, from the other talks this year in that um, someone else wrote the talk and I am just delivering it to the camera for her. Uh, A.D. Miles, a member of North Wake Church, wrote the talk and really did an excellent job, but she was unable to record it due to some um, health concerns, and so I have agreed to record it for her. She gave me a little bit of freedom of artistic expression and said I could tweak it in the ways, ways that I deemed necessary. And so I really just took a couple of stories that she had personal stories with her and her kids and replaced them with my family's stories. Um, but other than that, this is a talk from A.D. Miles. And uh, a little bit about myself. I have four kids, Elliot, Grant, Lydia, and Jade. And when Elliot was 10 months old, my oldest was 10 months old, I joined Mops, which is Lily Moms, but it was previously called Mops. And I was in Mops for eight years. Um, and one of the things that I am thankful for that the Lord gave me in Mops was a chance to see, to step out of the trenches of having a baby, changing diapers and sleep regressions and teething, etc. You guys don't need me to list it all. You're living it right now. Um, step back from that and kind of see the big picture of motherhood. And one of those things um, that helped me focus on the big picture was seeing how much of motherhood is training my child. Um, it shouldn't have been a surprise to me, although I was really surprised to learn that motherhood is about training children. Um, they even call it sleep training and potty training but you train your kids in all sorts of things. Um, you treat your kids to be gentle to other kids and to flowers they see in gardens. And you train your kids how to sleep and how to eat and how to not throw food down on the floor when they're eating. And um, We just really, a lot of motherhood is training kids. And so um, one of the things that Mops helped me learn was that we need to train our, start training our kids to be more others oriented and less self oriented. So I hope that this talk um, helps me impart some of AD's wisdom uh, about the importance of serving. Now, as moms, you guys might be listening to this or watching this and thinking, serving. Who does this lady think she is? She can't tell me anything about serving. It's what I do. I'm a mom, and you are. 100% right. As moms, we serve all day and sometimes all night, right? You make breakfast, you do the dishes, you change diapers, you wipe bottoms, you make beds, you do laundry, you grocery shop, you read books, you make song, I mean, sing songs, you make lunch, you do the dishes, you prepare snacks, you fill sippy cups, you vacuum, you clean bathrooms, you make dinner, you do the dishes and more, <laughs> do more dishes, you give baths, you tuck the kids in, and then you wake up the next day. If you get to sleep all night, you wake up the next day and do it all over again. So I don't need to tell you how to serve others. Serving others is a mother's life. But what I want to tell you about today is the importance of teaching your kids to serve with you. First, I want to talk about why teaching your kids to serve is important. And then I want to share some practical ways to plant a love of service in their lives. Um, tr please try to understand I'm not trying to add to your to-do list. I know it's already too long <laughs> and overwhelming. Um, this isn't just one more thing you're supposed to be doing with your kids, but teaching kids to serve includes teaching them to serve you. And hopefully, if you take a longer moment of your day than you would have normally to help them learn to serve, then these tips might actually lighten your load. Maybe not tomorrow, but at least after training your kids in these ways, it will lighten your load eventually. <laughs> so let's think, let's begin by thinking about why serving others is important. Why is it something good to do? Now, some people might answer with the perfect Sunday school answer and say, we serve God. I mean, we serve because God commands us to love our neighbor. And that's a great answer. But not everyone believes in the Bible. And even those of us who do sometimes want a little more than because God said so. I don't know about you guys, but my kids really don't like the answer because mommy said so. 
And sometimes it's not enough for me either, just because God said so. So why did God say so? Is it really good for us or is it just good for our witness with others? Maybe God just said it so that Christians would come across as friendly and other people would be willing to listen to what we have to say about the God that we serve. I'm sure that might be a part of the reason behind God's command. But God also is a practical God who cares about the details of our lives. There are pragmatic reasons to serve others well. So for example, in a 2008 study at the University, University of Michigan, followed by a, they followed a random sample of 10,317 people. Okay, that's a lot of people, over 10,000 people, from their high school graduation in 1957 until the year 2008. They followed 10,000 people. And they found that those who volunteered for selfless reasons, in other words, people who volunteered because they wanted to help, and not because of selfish reasons, like they just wanted to escape their own troubles for a bit or they feel better about themselves for volunteering, but those who volunteered for selfless reasons had lower mortality rates than the people who didn't serve or the people who served for selfish reasons. So if you want your kids to live a long, full life, we can teach them to serve others. We can plant in them a desire to be helpful. Those of you who have more than one child we probably already have learned, maybe, <laughs> sometimes, what researchers have also discovered, which is altruism, doing a good deed, um, is contagious. So when one sibling, it's possible, when one sibling takes their plate and places it in the sink, then another sibling will follow suit and take their plate as well. Or if brother goes and gets sister a cookie, then sister might go and get brother a drink. Um, sometimes, not all the time, not in my house, <laughs> sometimes children see acts of kindness and they copy them. Other times they might be more self-focused and miss completely what's going on, going on around them. It's times like that that it's our job to help them learn to become more aware of others and, um, and serve, aware of what others are doing and serve them. I'll get it out eventually. Um, so I want to encourage you to maybe add words to your family routine. If you say things like, hey, I wash your clothes because I love you and I want you to have clean clothes. You can help me fold because you love me and I know I could use your help. When you see service in your home, announce it and praise it. If I see my daughter handing my other daughter a hand towel, I can say, Lydia, thank you so much for handing Jade that towel. I know that she appreciates it. It's very kind. Jade, do you want to say thank you? Um, the more you point out helpfulness, the more it will be noticed and the more it has a chance to spread through your family members. Um, not only does serving others increase your lifespan, but it also makes us happy. Uh, many studies have demonstrated a strong correlation between serving others and happiness. We all want to raise healthy children, but we also want happy children. Growing them in a heart of service to others will actually help them become happier and healthier adults. Serving others enhances our sense of purpose, which causes us to feel more satisfied with our lives, and that's happiness. Of course we want happy and healthy children. Would you believe that serving others also improves a person's overall health? In 2013, a study from Carnegie Mellon showed that over, I mean, adults over 50 who volunteered regularly were less likely to develop high blood pressure than non-volunteering adults. Now, I know your kids are a long way from 50. Hopefully, they're a long way from high blood pressure. But you can develop patterns in them of serving others now that will help them be healthier adults. Other studies suggest that Serving others reduces chronic pain, it decreases a person's risk of depression, and it reduces stress levels. So the research on serving others tells us that serving others is good for us. It's good for us as moms, and it's also good and beneficial for our kids. I hope you agree that growing hearts bent towards serving others is um, a worthy undertaking. Like I mentioned before, it might take an extra moment of your day that you had not planned to spend, but I'm gonna tell you now of some practical ways to do this. 
Again, this is not a checklist. You don't have to add these to your to-do list, but just some practical ways that might not take too much more time or too much energy out of your already very busy days. So when I started speaking today, I listed maybe 20 things that we do as moms every day, acts of service that you are already doing for your family. A smart thing you could do is figure out how to bring your little ones along to join you in these activities of serving. Those of you with infants, just tuck this away for maybe a year or two. Um, but those of you with toddlers and especially school-aged children, we can work to implement some of these ideas in our families now. So some of us start our morning changing our diaper to, I am out of this phase of life, praise God. But you guys might be changing diapers. And if you are changing a toddler's diaper, you could give her the job or him the job of taking the dirty diaper and putting it in the trash, placing it in the diaper genie, right? A lot of times, if you ask a little kid to help you, they'll be super enthusiastic about helping mommy. Take advantage of this while they are young. <laughs> um, but if you tell her it, she's such a big help or he is such a good helper, um, then serving can be become contagious. This kind of praise might make them want to serve more. It might encourage them to serve, I mean, their siblings to serve as well. In addition to changing a lot of diapers during the course of the day, we also prepare a lot of food. We do breakfast, we do lunches, we do dinners, we do snacks, we do afternoon snacks. We do waters, we do juices, we do milks. <laughs> but your little ones can serve here too. Um, so the things that we can do are a couple of ideas, again, not a checklist, but at meal times, if you have a little one, you can maybe start by giving them the spoons to sit out on the places at the table. And then when they get a little older, you can graduate them to forks and their younger sibling can take the spoons responsibility. And then it goes plates and cups until they're setting the whole table for you. Um, and that's a way that they're learning to serve their family. And you're, you know, it's something you can get the little ones involved with. Like I said earlier is, often easier to train the younger ones. They're more enthusiastic about helping. Um, it's a lot easier to train the younger ones that are eager to serve than to try and start training older children who are used to being served all the time. Um, don't let that discourage you. If you have older kids, AD wrote in her notes that older individual individuals, even husbands, can be trained to serve others. <laughs> you can take AD's word for it. Try to think of ways your children can help you. For me, I have um, plants at my house, thanks to my mother-in-law, who is Lily Mom's mentor, Penny. Um, she helps me with my plants and helps me keep my plants alive, and she even replaces plants when I kill them. Um, but it is good for our kids to learn to serve their moms. And one of the ways my kids help me and serve me, because I love these plants, is they learn to water them. Uh, now, that wasn't, wasn't just something that came natural to my kids. I watched one of my sons the first time I said, can you help me? I have these big cups that I fill up inside and I take on the front porch and pour the water over the plants. And he went out like this and he took his huge cup of water and went and almost broke all these fragile little stems of my flowers in this pot. And so I had to train him. It took several times of me going out there with him and saying, don't pour this whole cup on this little pot, get close to the roots, pour half of the water and then move it to another pot. So I have trained all four of my kids now. I can say, hey, could you help mommy? Could you go and water my plants? They know where the cups are. They know how to fill them up. They know how to carry them out to the front porch. Now your kids, if they're crawling, obviously they're not gonna water your plants for you. But like I said, keep this in mind for a couple years from now. Um, because now all of my kids, they have something they can do to help me and to serve me. Um, and it's good for our kids to learn to serve and to serve their moms. It teaches them the value of service and prepares them to serve the larger community. It's gonna be, teach them to be helpful at school, one, may, one day maybe in college or later at their jobs. Another easy area for kids to learn to serve their family is the laundry. 
You guys have laundry at your house, right? We have tons. If you ever need any more laundry to do, come to my house. We have a lot of laundry. But very small children, even very small children, not babies, but young kids, can help put their dirty clothes in a hamper. That's something that you can start them with. Hey, pick up your own dirty clothes. Put them in the hamper. They can also help um, with folding. They can pair socks. It's a good sorting skill that they can go through the socks and sort the socks. Um, they can be in charge of folding the washcloths. Just start with something small. You know, sort the laundry, give them the little pile of washcloths and let them, you know, teach them how to fold, be patient with them as they learn and um, encourage them, thank them for their service and for their help and tell them how thankful you are for them. But uh, one day you'll be able to look at your older kids and just say, hey, it's laundry day. Now at my house, this is where some grumbling comes in, but they know that my boys know that I don't wash their clothes and if they want clean socks and clean underwear, especially they're gonna have to do it themselves. And so I can say, boys, it's laundry day and they can start their own laundry. Um, that didn't happen overnight. I had to start when they were younger and teach them the skills, putting the clothes in the hamper, you know, separating out the reds. We don't wash reds with the rest of the colors at my house. Things like this is something that I not only had to tell them once, but I had to train them how to do it. I had to take a few minutes out of my busy day and train my kids, but I'm training them not only to serve themselves for laundry, but sometime it's in the future, it's gonna be good for them. It's definitely a service to me. It's gonna be good for their college roommates or their you know, apartment mates one day or their future families. Um, it's just a way to train them in serving. So these are a, a couple of things that you could do every day that are ready-made service opportunities that we already have in our house for our children. We don't have to seek them out. I also want to encourage you to include your children in service opportunities that might not happen every day, the ones that happen outside of your home, to serve the people in your community, in your church, in your Lily Moms group. In this stage of life, being a mom with little kids, chances are you're gonna know someone who has a baby. And a good way to serve that person is to make them a meal. You can involve your kids in this. Tell them if, People served you in this way when you were born, I mean, when they were born. Hey, you know what? Somebody brought me a meal after I had you. Mommies, after they have babies, they get really tired and it's nice if we can feed them and they don't have to cook. Explain that to them and as simple as needed, but encourage them to serve other people with you. So take them to the grocery store when you're buying your groceries. Tell them, you know, we're buying some, some food to help make our, my friend Sally is having a baby and we're gonna make her a meal. This is These are the ingredients that are gonna go into it. When you bring the ingredients into your kitchen and you're about to cook the meal, tell your little ones, hey, we're gonna make Miss Sally this meal. Do you wanna help me stir it? Or, um, you know, do you want to help me count the tomatoes? <laughs> um, and then finally, if if you can, take them with you when you deliver the meal. They'll, be, they'll feel like they're really part of that service. You can even let them sit in the van and just open the door so they can see you hand the meal to, to Miss Sally. And um, they can see firsthand how much the receivers appreciate the meal. So thinking of things that you can do in your community uh, and ways to consider inviting your friends to be a part of that service. Um, perhaps you guys go to sports. Uh, either maybe your husband plays sports or maybe um, your kids, your older kids are in sports. If you have to bring snacks for the team, maybe your kid can help you hand those snacks out afterwards. Or if they're a, a little one and they can't really run around handing snacks out, maybe they can hold the first aid kit. I mean, there are all sorts of ways that you can involve your kids in service when you're serving someone outside of your home that's not on a daily basis. There is another benefit to serving that I didn't talk about before. Um, in AD's opinion, it's the biggest benefit of all. Serving others develops gratitude in your children's hearts and grateful children are one of life's most precious blessings. Um, the opposite, on the other hand, are um, children who suffer from entitlement and they can be one of life's most difficult challenges. We want to work on growing serving in our children um, who have clear, concrete examples of things they can be thankful for. 
kids may not always make the connection between service and gratitude on their own. It's our jobs as moms to help them grow hearts of service, but also help them grow hearts of gratitude. And when your toddler takes that dirty diaper to the trash and is putting it in that diaper genie for you, then you can praise her and or be thankful out loud that she's happy and healthy, that she's walking, that she can run and jump. Uh, when your little ones help you sit, set the table and put the spoons out or the forks out on the table, then you can praise them for their help, but also tell them how grateful you are that they're so smart and they know how to follow directions. Um, when you're at the grocery store buying that meal for Miss Sally that you're going to come home and prepare, you can talk out loud with your kids about how grateful you are for the money that you have to purchase groceries for yourself and for another family who's had a baby recently. Um, so when we were little, I mean, when, when we were little, when my kids were little, we started um, praying with them before bedtime. It's part of our bedtime routine. And that's another thing that you kind of have to teach your kids to do is to pray. Um, I'm not gonna say which kid of mine might have prayed a prayer or something like this. Dear God, why is toilet paper always white? Can you please tell the maker of all the toilet paper to do some cool colors, maybe with like start with blue? Yeah, so <laughs> we have had to train, my husband and I have had to train our kids in um, how to have conversations with God and that we need to be thankful as part of our conversation and show gratitude as part of our talking with God. Um, and so I, we, at North Wake, if you are attending North Wake, this past year, you know that we have had some um, tragic losses of people in our congregation. And one of those was my oldest son's friend. Um, and the afternoon that we found out that my son had lost his friend, we decided to pray. And I guess I didn't realize just in hearing his nightly prayers how he had established a routine of being thankful to God in prayer and giving gratitude um, in prayer. And the first words that came out of his mouth when he started praying were prayers of gratitude for his friend and the friendship that they had had and for his friend's relationship with God and that he knew that he was at home in heaven with God and not in any more pain. And I'm so thankful that my husband and I, not without failing, but consistently over the years, have prayed with my son, prayed with our kids, and taught them how to be thankful for God, to God, for the blessings he's given us. Um, and in, in the moments following a tragedy, that that was the first thing that my son thought to tell God was thank you for this relationship I had with my friend and thank you that he's in heaven and he's not in pain um, any longer. That was a lesson for me because I don't always go to God first with thankfulness or with gratitude. Um, but my son did and that's that's where the, the student becomes the teacher, right? That's what we want of our kids. We want to train them so that this is just in their hearts um, and that's the first thing that that comes out is gratefulness and gratitude. Um, you've heard it said so much more that um, so much more is caught than taught when it comes to raising kids. And so I encourage you to let them catch you being grateful. Studies have shown that gratitude, like serving others, improves physical and psychological health. It helps you sleep better. A study in 2011 um, in applied psychology showed that people who spend a few minutes writing down what they have to be thankful for before bed slept longer and better than those who did not practice um, gratitude, time and gratitude. So gratitude is good for us and it is good for our kids. We want to cultivate gratitude in their little hearts and we also want to cultivate a love of serving others in their lives. These two traits go hand in hand in many ways. They also teach us to be content. In today's world of beautiful commercials and constant beautiful pictures on social media, cultivating contentment can be a challenge. 
But when we honestly and clearly see all that we have and we're grateful for it, when we, out of what we have, whether it's material goods or time or energy, when we can share with others and serve others, then we know what Paul knew in the first century when he was writing to the church in Philippi. We can experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. That's from Philippians 4, 7. This is the gift that I want to encourage you to give to your children today and in the years ahead. A gift of service, a gift of gratitude, and ultimately the gift of peace. Thanks so much, ladies, for letting me bring this talk to you. Um, I hope that you have great discussion group chats about it. Um, and I really just hope that you, like me, were encouraged and challenged to incorporate um, service into your family life, into your momming, um, and that you can hopefully grow um, a love of service and gratitude in your kids' hearts. Thank you so much. Bye.